Hey y'all, it's Megan. If you're returning to my channel, welcome back. And if you're new, welcome aboard. So today I'm talking about something that people ask me about all the time, whether I was working in the parks, whether I'm visiting the parks, here on YouTube, people want to know, well, how do you prepare for going to the parks during the summer? So the first thing I'm going to mention about going to the parks during the summer, how can I mentally, emotionally, physically prepare for that? And the best thing, the first thing I'm gonna say is just know going into it, if you're gonna be there between May and October, it's going to be hot. Um, it's, it could be hot other times of the year, but you know for a certainty <laughs> that in those months it will be hot. Um, and you also know in those summer months that it will rain knowing for sure that it's going to be hot and it's going to rain um, you can prepare a little bit better uh, as if you know you're not going into it thinking well maybe there'll be a day that it's only going to be like 70 and sunny no it's it's going to be in the 80s it's going to be in the 90s it's going to be humid and scorching so be prepared for it so for the rain as always take a rain jacket take a poncho take an umbrella whatever rain accoutrement you want to use. Um, I typically go with a rain jacket just because it stays on better. Ponchos have a tendency to blow off of my head and stuff. Um, rain jackets also are a little less sticky to me because they have vents built in as opposed to the poncho that it's just like you took a trash bag and put it over your body and you've been saran wrapped like a Christmas turkey. So I pick rain jacket but a lot of people want ponchos. They are a bit easier to go over backpacks and slide cameras underneath and stuff like that. So whichever one of those that you want to do or if you want to take an umbrella, I typically don't because I don't want another thing to carry. But uh, take something that is going to shield you, protect you, keep you from getting wet when it rains. And the other thing that I say going along with both heat and rain is I recommend sandals in the parks. Not a lot of people do. Most people say get a good pair of walking or running shoes or whatever. I almost exclusively wear flip-flops in the parks and I don't wear like expensive flip-flops. I literally swear, I've told you a million times, I swear by my $20 Roxy flip-flops. Those are the only things that I'll wear into the park if I have a choice because they're comfortable and they aren't going to rub my feet and when it rains, my feet dry a heck of a lot faster than tennis shoes. So um, I have worn Vans before, they got wet. I have gotten blisters the size of quarters from wearing canvas shoes and them being wet. So I hardly ever wear sneakers or any kind of closed shoe unless I absolutely have to when I'm at the parks. So whether you like flip-flops, if you want something like a Chaco or a Tiva, whatever kind of sandal that you like and you know that you can walk in, then I recommend those. Um, you know, if you de if you definitely know that you don't want to wear sandals, some people know they're not. My mom was not going to be wearing a sandal in the park. That was just not something that she was interested in because she knew how her feet were. So if you know that you can't walk 26,000 steps in a day, miles and miles and miles wearing sandals, don't, don't do it. But if you are comfortable wearing sandals, then I recommend doing that just for the heat and for the weather, for the rain. It helps with several of those things. And the last thing about the weather that I'm gonna mention is a shocking one, I'm sure, sunscreen. Bring sunscreen, use it, use it everywhere. And I don't know uh, if you also have family members who are like, I don't burn, I just tan. Um, you are a lot closer to the equator, most likely, than wherever you normally live. You're going to be uh, getting a lot more sun exposure in the day than you probably are usually used to. Uh, I mean, if you live in Florida, then maybe you, you uh, are used to that kind of sun, but if you are not, from somewhere that is constantly sunny and very southern as uh, as opposed to you know the middle of the country somewhere the sun is more intense whether you burn at home or not you may burn when you are there so put sunscreen on don't forget places like the tips of your ears that's where my dad always burned the worst so he would walk around with like white coated ear tips uh, like a little interesting uh, Lord of the Rings character but you know just make sure that you are actually using that sunscreen because everyone's going to tell you to bring it and you're probably going to bring it but whether or not you use it is the important part make sure that you are using it and make sure that you get all the spots that are exposed or you probably will get burned and a sunburn is like a surefire way to be absolutely miserable one last thing about the clothes i swear that this, this will be the last one ladies if you want to wear a dress or a skirt you you see all these cute disney bounds you're going to do that um maybe don't do that on days that you know that you're going to be there park open to park close uh, it may seem like, oh, the dress is going to be breezy. I'll get a nice little bit of airflow. It'll be, it'll be wonderful. But if you are like me, and I'm going to say 99% of the rest of the population, and your thighs touch, um, that's a very uncomfortable day. I speak from experience. Uh, 
you want to wear something, you know, at least put on a pair of like biking shorts or something underneath your skirts or dresses, something to uh, keep your thighs separated. Uh, we, we like separation uh, in the parks because otherwise it can be real uncomfortable real fast and we, we, it's not a good day for anyone. All right, let's talk about food and drink during the summer months. Uh, I'm gonna say something absolutely mind-blowing. It's gonna absolutely shock you. Drink water. That's a good thing to do when you're <laughs> there in the summer and um, don't think I'm breaking any new ground here, but we always bring the biggest water bottle we can find. I think we have like a 40 ounce Yeti bottle or something like that. It's, it's huge. But um, just bringing the water or buying water if you choose to, um, that is, you know, that's a good step. But what we like to do is, I like to go ahead the night, and the night before we're going into a park, go ahead and fill the bottle up like halfway with water and freeze it. Most places that you're staying, even if you're um, in on Disney property and you just have a small kitchen uh, set up where it's just like a mini fridge or whatever, you're usually gonna have a freezer so you can put a water bottle in there and freeze the water. So that that serves as ice for the next day. Um, it's gonna melt pretty quickly, but it will help keep the water cold for longer and cold water is always more appetizing. You're more likely to drink the water when it's nice and cold, right? So we always do that and you know, this is not a new tip or anything, but we do also like to go to quick service locations. They're few and far between that are doing it right now. I think more and more are starting to open up uh, post COVID apocalypse, but you can go to quick service locations and just ask for a cup of water and they will give it to you for free. You don't have to pay $4.25 or whatever it is now for the bottles of water around the park, unless you just want to. If you prefer bottled water, you do you. But I like to go to like Starbucks or wherever and get the free cup of water. Go ahead and just pour that into the Yeti and just keep it topped up all day. That way we are never running out of water. We always have it. It's usually cold. Um, get an insulated bottle if you can because that does help to keep it nice and cold and fresh for you so that you are once again more likely to actually drink it. And almost as important as drinking water is eating. Now most people don't have to be told to eat when they're at Disney. That's kind of a thing that people like to do. It's fun. It's fun. Like there's Disney food, Mickey waffles, what, what's not to like? But I am one of those people that when I get hot and sweaty and tired, like I just don't want to eat. I don't feel like eating, keep the food away from me. But I have learned through experience again, that uh, the longer I go without eating, the worse I feel. Dude, I'm like a cow, I graze all day long. I eat like every two hours, it's just kind of a problem. But uh, if I don't do that, then obviously I get into a situation where I'm really not feeling great. So however you normally eat kind of keep that up but also take into consideration that you're going to be burning more calories you're going to be doing a lot more moving you're going to be exhausted more from the sun so you do need to eat something and i don't mean like get an ice cream every hour eat something of substance maybe <laughs> every so often grab some fruit bring some fruit with you we like to bring snacks into the parks with us bring a sandwich bring whatever you want um but make sure that you are eating, keeping some calories in your body because otherwise you're going to get really run down. You're going to start feeling bad and that's just going to kind of ruin your vacation. So even though it's counterintuitive for some of us, make sure that you are eating even if you don't necessarily feel hungry. My next thing that I'm going to say is I like to plan my rides based on the time of day. And that sounds kind of weird, but um, it's, it's not quite as easy when you're not doing fast passes and stuff. But if you can, kind of... Think about where you're gonna be in the day and position yourself so that you're gonna be near an indoor attraction at the hottest part of the day. So if you go to Epcot and you are gonna do kind of the uh, future world stuff in the morning and then you're gonna go over to the World Showcase in the afternoons, that's great because you can kind of duck in and out of air conditioned places, you can spend time in shops, you're not gonna be as hot, it's not gonna be as exhausting. Uh, another great thing there is I always recommend to, if you're there in the afternoon especially, go into the show in the France Pavilion, the Impressions de France, go see that. That's like 20 minutes that you get to sit in the air conditioning, you're doing something, you're not just wasting time, you're experiencing an attraction. Uh, and so, I mean, uh, I like it too, so it's like it's really pretty. But plan things so that you can kind of get a respite from the heat on occasion. If you wait in a line outside and it's a really long line, you're at Thunder Mountain. Thunder Mountain, surface of the sun. You're out in that line and it takes you an hour, hour and a half, however long it takes you. And then you do an outdoor attraction on Thunder Mountain. You're like, I can't, I can't do it anymore. I can't do, I can't stay outside. We're gonna have to go home. Go over to Pirates of the Caribbean. The queue is mostly inside. The ride is inside. It's a long boat ride. It takes you several minutes. You get to kind of relax. It's not just like an in and out quick roller coaster where as soon as you get done with the line, okay, we're done, let's move on to another line. 
do Pirates of the Caribbean, go over to Haunted Mansion, that's another one that's like 10 minutes long, you get to sit, you get to relax. When the Hall of Presidents is open, nap time sponsored by Disney according to my dad. 22 minutes, solid air conditioning. Hit that up after you stood in the long line outside. So just make sure that you are kind of thinking about you know, if you're starting to get really hot, if you're standing in a long line, think about what's around you that you may be able to go inside to do next so that you don't feel like you necessarily are just like, okay, we're done now, day's over, I can't go on any longer. Try to see if you can find something that's gonna give you a little refresher and see how you feel after that because sometimes all you need is just a nice quiet boat ride, looking at some looting and plundering to make you feel better and continue your day. The last thing I'm going to say is don't discount the benefits of the mid-afternoon nap. Uh, you know, some people are wanting to go to the parks and they're wanting to get there at park open, stay till park closed, go, 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 all day long. And they're like, they feel like if we if we go home, we're wasting our day, we're wasting our time. There's stuff that we could be doing right now if we, if we leave and go home and then come back. And to an extent, that's true. Less time in the park does equal less time doing things in the park. I mean, that's just how it works. But Take into consideration how much you're enjoying it. If you are just dragging your lifeless body through this park just for the sake of dragging your body through this park and doing all of the things, are you enjoying it? Are you having fun? Are your kids having fun? You have to weigh the benefits of staying versus going home, rinsing off, taking a shower, taking a nap for an hour, and then coming back a little bit later when it's not as hot. Everyone feels a little bit better. You're when you're clean, you just feel good. Uh, so, you know, don't immediately write that off as an option. Yes, you will not have as much time in the park, but will you enjoy the time that you have in the park more is the question that you need to answer. Uh, and if you feel like the most important thing for me is doing everything on my list and getting it all done no matter what, then maybe you do stay in the park all day and you just, you, you push through and you make it happen. But if you're like me and you're like, you know what, I could go and do something else right now, but maybe I don't get to do that, but I'm gonna really come back like raring to go, ready to conquer the next four things when we, after a nap and like tonight's gonna be awesome. That's what I choose to do most of the time. I usually do go home uh, around four or five. We eat something and then we come back into the park after that. And that works for me. That's what I like to do to avoid a little bit of that super, super rough afternoon heat. Um, but. If that's not something that you wanna do, then you don't have to, but just keep it in mind as an option and think about whether or not you're going to benefit from just taking just taking a little break, getting some much needed rest. So that's it, those are my tips for how I like to handle going to the parks in the summer. So let me know what you think. Uh, do you have any tips that I missed? Things that you like to do to help cope with the weather, the heat, uh, the exhaustion that comes from being there during the summer, the very crowded, hot summer months. Uh, let me know what your ideas are down below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, y'all.